lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Bless His holy name. Let Him know you appreciate that as the Lord Most High, greater than the greatest, higher than the highest, wiser than the wisest, the light of the world, the one who speaks and it is done, the one who opens and no man can shut. The one who shuts and no man can open. Bless his holy name. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Worship the ancient of days. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Bless him. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, my Father. I bless your name. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm not pushing it in the room. Take out the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, my Redeemer. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, my Redeemer. Praised, you are worthy to be praised, my Redeemer. You are worthy to be praised, you are worthy to be praised, you are worthy. to be praised my Redeemer you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised my Redeemer
Father. Ancient of days, we worship you. King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you. Unchangeable Lord, we bow before you. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for bringing us to yet another month. Thank you for all you've done since the beginning of this year. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Thank you for November. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. The Lord said there is someone here saying, it's a long time God spoke to me directly last. He asked me to tell you you will hear from me tonight. <laughs> Father, we are here tonight because we need help. As individuals, we need help. As families, we need help. As a nation, we need help. Even as a church, we need help. Father, send help to us. Let our sun rise again. Before this day is over, my Father, my God, before this night is gone, let our sun rise again. Please save souls tonight. Heal tonight. Set captives free. Let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let there be wonders. And let the miracles begin right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Uh, shake out with two or three people and say good evening. God bless you. And then you may please be seated. With the exception of those born in November. If you, if you are in November child, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I want to thank you for your children who are born in the month of November. I'm asking Lord God Almighty that because 11 is the number of double grace plus. Abundant grace give to this your children. Blessings enough and extra give to them in Jesus' name. Something greater than double promotion, give unto them. Give them a new beginning. A new beginning of joy, of success, of anointing, of progress, of ability to pray, of a closer walk with you. Let it be well with them. 
and let them serve you more than others. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let children of November shout another hallelujah. By the special grace of God, another Congress is around the corner. From December the 3rd to the 8th, by the grace of God, we will have a Holy Ghost Congress. The theme is Glory Ahead. Glory Ahead. We will start off in the old auditorium. The first three days will be at the old auditorium. And then the last three days will be here. There will be no divine encounter or Shiloh hour in December because that is the week of the Congress. The Congress will take care of everything. This year's Congress, by the special grace of the Most High God, will be the greatest we have ever seen thus far. So I will encourage you, set that week aside. It's going to be very glorious. Invite your friends, your relatives, your partners, your co-workers, and invite your enemies too so that they can get born again and cease to trouble you. Tonight we want to talk on My Son Will Rise Again. I think you should say it with your own mouth. That's uh, under the broad heading of stronger than your enemies, part 10. But before we proceed to the real topic for today, as usual, we will want to spend the first few minutes talking to those who are yet to give their life to Jesus Christ. And so for the first part of tonight's message, we will want to go to Genesis 49, verse 1 to 7. Genesis 49, verse 1 to 7. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together, that I may tell you that which shall before you in the last days. Gather yourself together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might. And the excellence, uh, my, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou went up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it, he went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. My honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they sue a man, and in their self-will, they dig down 
a war. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. And we divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. It is a dangerous thing to think that when you do something evil, because judgment didn't come immediately, that that means what you've done is forgotten. Sin is a killer. It kills. It doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how important you are. Pay attention to my words. You do evil in secret. Nothing hid that will not come to the open. That is the word of God. Jacob was about to die. He was on his deathbed. And he gathered together all his children. And said, I'm going now. But before I go, let me tell you what will happen to you in the future. And he started with his eldest son, Reuben. He described him in glowing terms. How he's strong, handsome, etc., etc. And then he turned to him and said, you may be the firstborn. You may have all the attributes of a great man. He said, but you will become nothing. Why? Because in Genesis 35, verse 22, Genesis 35, verse 22, Reuben went in to have sex with his father's uh, other wife. And they reported the matter to his father. He heard about it and said nothing. He just kept quiet. And so Reuben thought, I've gotten away with this one. But the father waited until when he was about to die. When there had been no room for maneuvering. He said, okay, you thought I didn't know what you did? I knew. I'm waiting. And now, the time for judgment has come. And then he turned to Simeon and Levi. And he remembered what these two boys also did in Genesis 34. From verse 1 to 30. Genesis 34, 1 to 30. What happened was Israel was in, in the land of uh, some strangers. And one of the sons of the owner of the land saw one of their daughters 
of Israel and entice her and raped her. That girl happens to be the sister of Simeon and Levi. They were furious. You raped our daughter, our sister. And then the boy who did this one told his own father, he said, I love this girl. I know I made a mistake. I shouldn't have forced myself on her. But I'm ready to marry her. So the father came with the boy who performed the offense, committed the offense, and said to Jacob, please, anything you want, just tell me, we'll pay any dowry. My son wants to marry your daughter. We've come to restitute. Okay. Jacob said, well, it's not our custom to marry strangers. But if you are willing to be circumcised like us, then we can begin to talk. After all, we are strangers in your land. Ah, and the uh, other people said, we will do anything you say. So they circumcised every one of them. And when you circumcise a man, if you circumcise a child, you know how painful it can be. All the men got circumcised. By the third day, when the circumcision had taken total hold on the men, and they were in great pain and sore, Simeon and Levi took their swords and invaded the, the home of these people, killed them all, every one of them, and then took their sister away. When Jacob heard, he said, Ah, I gave my word to these people. Now everybody in the surrounding will hear he said, you boys, you have troubled me today. But he kept quiet until he was about to die. And now turned to them and said, Simeon, Levi, you wicked boys. He said, you'll be scattered in Israel. If your father causes you on his deathbed, it means that your son has set. Because as soon as Jacob finished causing these boys, he died. So there's no room to maneuver. However, something happened. Something very, very strange. In Numbers chapter 3, verse 5 to 13. Numbers 3, 5 to 13. God spoke to Moses years later and said to him, Bring Levi near me. The boy that the father said will be scattered. God said, eh, 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 bring Levi near. They're going to be my priests. I've chosen them to be my firstborn. Uh -uh. The father calls him and died. The almighty God said, I cancel the cause. And instead of the curse, I replace it with a blessing. The greatest blessing of all. In fact, God went further to say, the only thing that Levi will be doing will be worshiping me. 
They won't do any manual labor. I will supply their needs. If there's anyone here tonight under any form of curse, in the name that's above every other name, before the sun rises tomorrow, the curse will be gone. But what happened? What led to this dramatic change? Because it is the same God who says, hmm, if your father blesses you, you are blessed. If your father causes you, you are caused. He says, how come he's doing this? Well, something happened. In Exodus 32, before who? We got to numbers. Something happened in Exodus 32. Moses went to collect the Ten Commandments and he was late in coming. He was away for 30 days and uh, 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, the children of Israel said to Aaron, Moses has been gone this time. He hasn't come back. By now he must be dead. Because a God that will be worshipping. In any case, who is this God that we can see? We want a God that we can see. So Aaron made them a calf of gold. And then got them to begin to dance and eat and drink, dance before this idol. And then Moses returned and saw what's going on. What is this? And Moses was aware <laughs> that these people, they can be very tough, particularly now that many of them were drunk and so on. And he wanted to punish them for what they've done against God. So the Bible says, in Exodus 32, from verse 25 to 26, Exodus 32, 25 to 26, Moses stood at the gate and announced, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. All the sons of Levi, like one man, cross over to the side of Moses. They said, we are on the Lord's side. God looked down from heaven. These people who are supposed to be wanderers, these people who are supposed to be scattered, these people that their father had cursed, they say they are on my side. God said, okay. If you're on my side, then I'm on your side. You will be my firstborn. The curse of your father, I cancel. You will be the one who will be serving me. I'm sure you know the conclusion. The Lord is asking tonight, this extraordinary night, when destinies are going to change, when sun will rise. God is calling who is on the Lord's side. If you are here, you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Answer that question tonight. If you are on the Lord's side, run over to him, let him save your soul. Let his blood wipe away your sin. 
Let every curse upon you be destroyed tonight. So if you are here, or you are listening to me at the overflow in the old arena, or at all the various watching centers across the globe, and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, but you want to do so, hear what God is saying. Who is on the Lord's side? Come and surrender your life to him. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. If by the time I say 10, you are not already standing before the altar, I know you don't want to come. We will continue with the rest of the service. But if you want to come, the Lord is calling now. Who is on the Lord's side? If your answer is yes, Lord, I am on your side. I want to say bye-bye to a life of sin. I want to say bye-bye to a forces of darkness. I want to say bye-bye to everything that is contrary to your will. Then come and surrender your life to Jesus now. I'm counting. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. The choice is a simple one. Jesus Christ said, those who are not for me are against me. It's either you are on the Lord's side or you are against the Lord. The choice is yours. Six. There is no middle ground. It's either you are for him or you are against him. He's saying, who is on my side? He's calling. Who wants to surrender his or her life to me? Who wants to be saved? Who wants his sins forgiven? Who wants to say bye-bye to the devil and welcome to Jesus? Come now. Seven. Eight. I can see some of you are coming from afar. I'll wait a little, but you have to hurry up. You have to hurry up. It's your day of decision. You want to be saved. You want your sins forgiven. You want the blood of Jesus to wipe away your sins. Come. There's nothing hidden that will not come to the open. When Simon, Simeon and Levi kill those people, they shed innocent blood, and blood has a voice. Blood always cries out. You shed innocent blood, that blood will cry out sooner or later. Nine. Come. 
Let the blood of Jesus wash away your sins and give you a brand new beginning. Those of you who have already come and those of you who are on the way, cry unto the Lord now. Ask him to please save your soul and let his blood wash away your sins. Talk to him. Promise him from now on you will serve him. You will serve him in spirit and in truth. Ask him to have mercy on you. Promise him that from today onward, he will be your Lord. And please, the rest of us, can we stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them, that the one who saved our own souls will save their souls also. Pray for them, brethren. Intercede for them. The Almighty God, who can cancel curses, who can redeem from the curses of the law, who save the soul of these people, wipe away their sins, give them a brand new beginning. And those of you who are still on the way, just keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Because I'll be praying for salvation in a moment. But even as you are running in, cry unto the Lord. Ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to please forgive your sins and give you a brand new beginning. Promise him that by the grace of God, you will not go back into a world of sin. That you will serve him in spirit and in truth, from now and henceforth. Hurry up, hurry up. I can see, see quite a few of you. Come. The Lord is calling you. He wants to save your soul. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to bless your holy name for your word. I want to thank you very, very much for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know wise cast out. They've come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins. Let your blood wash away their sins. Father, save their souls. Write their names in the book of life. And from now on, Lord, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. And let them remain yours forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout hallelujah. I want to rejoice with you because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. And so the counselors will give you some cards, which you are to fill very quickly, and then give it back to them, your name, your address, your prayer request. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. While that is going on, um, the, there is a little information that they will put on the screen for you. By the grace of God, we have started another method of reaching out to you 24-7 all the year round. So you can listen to our sermons uninterrupted 24-7. They will put the details on the screen for you in a moment.
Can you keep the information on the screen a little longer? Let them get the details. This is a television, a special television that is based on the internet. The channel is called Redeemers Network Television, and you can link up with it on www.redeemersnetwork.tv. Take note of that. Just get it on the internet. It runs for free. This channel runs online 24-7 until Jesus comes. It broadcasts our messages indefinitely. The, the message will be on all the time. You'll be on, the only message you'll be hearing on that channel will be our message by the grace of God. And it will also give you live broadcasts of the Holy Ghost services anywhere in the world. Anywhere we are in the world and there's a Holy Ghost service, you can always go to this channel and you get the message coming to you direct. Again, the link is www.redeemersnetwork.tv Redeemersnetwork.tv God bless you. I want to know who is on the Lord's side. I want to know I 
answer that question very clearly tonight. Who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. I am on the Lord's side. Oh. Who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. I am on the Lord's side. I I live as long as I live. I am on the Lord's side. The Lord will be on your side forever in Jesus' name. Now, Psalm 30, from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 30. Reading from verse 1 to 5. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endured for a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. My son shall rise again. Say it loud and clear. God controls sunrise and sunset. Every day begins with an evening. As far as God is concerned, every day begins with an evening. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Genesis 1 verse 5. In the evening and in the morning, the first day. Psalm 55, verse 17. Psalm 55, verse 17. David said, In the evening, in the morning, in the noon, will I pray. The day begins in the evening. In Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3. After God made the heavens and the earth, everything became dark. Darkness covered the whole place. It was nighttime. But then God commanded the first arise, let there be light. And there was light. According to Job chapter 9, verse 1, Job chapter 9, verse 1, all the way to verse 7, Job 9, 1 to 7, particularly verse 7, we discover that if God commands the sun not to rise, it won't. So the sun rises at his command. It rises at his command. In the name that's above every other name, he will command the sun to rise for someone here tonight. And according to Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14, Joshua 10, from verse 12 to 14, if he commands the sun not to set, 
it will not set. That's why I would like to decree tonight for all of you who are genuine children of the Most High God, when your sun rises this time, it will never set again. God controls sunrise and sunset. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah 38, verse 5 to 8, Isaiah 38, verse 5 to 8, we find that when God commands the son to retrace his step, it obeyed. The son has gone down a certain number of degrees. God said, okay, son, go back. Go back. <laughs> Several years ago, I think it was at the University of Ibada. I was preaching. And suddenly I heard God say that there is someone here. God has reduced your age by 10 years. And an elderly woman, a professor, caught it and said, Amen. It wasn't long after that that people began to say to her, Prof, you are looking younger. Oh, she said, you were not there. You didn't hear? God took 10 years away from my age. May I prophesy to someone here tonight in the name that's above every other name, you will begin to grow younger. The Bible says in Psalm 113, verse 3, Psalm 113, verse 3, it says, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name shall be praised. He controls the rising and the setting of the sun. Psalm 74, verse 16, Psalm 74, verse 16 says, the day is dying, O oh Lord, and the night also. He controls both. The day or the night. Now, the one who controls the day and the night automatically then controls seasons. Because when we are talking about rainy season, as we say, oh, we are enjoying the rainy season, day is passing. The sun is setting, the sun is rising, the sun is setting. And before you know it, dry season will come. And while you are in the dry season, the sun is rising, the sun is setting. Before you know it, the rainy season is back. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 20 to 21, Daniel 2, 20 to 21, the Bible says, He changes times and seasons. I'm believing God that the season is about to change for the better for someone. <laughs> you remember the story of woman who was well over 50 and had never married because he just couldn't talk to a woman to say, marry me, highly educated. <coughs> highly educated and uh, comfortable job. But he just couldn't say to a woman, will you marry me? Then there was a program like this. He gave his life to Jesus. Six months later, he got married. First time the wife got pregnant, set of twins. Two years later, another set of twins. Because his season has changed. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the almighty God and say, Father, beginning from now, 
Let my season of joy begin. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. He controls times and seasons. Almighty God, beginning from now, let my season of joy start. Let my season of joy, my season of rejoicing, let it start. Let it start. Let it start. Let my season of rejoicing start from tonight, from this very moment. He changes times, he changes seasons, he controls sun, sunrise, he controls sunset. Almighty God, from this very moment, let my season of rejoicing begin. Thank you, Father. Let my own season of rejoicing begin. Let my season of rejoicing begin right now. Right now. Right now. You change times and seasons. Let my own season of rejoicing begin right now. Thank you, Father. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. No matter how long the night, it must end. Night must yield today. It has been like that from the foundation of the world. It must yield today. In the evening, in the morning, the first day. And then we came again in the evening, in the morning, the second day. In the evening, in the morning, the third day. So the night must end. And as the Lord lives, the one who controls sunrise and sunset. For someone here today, your night is over. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. The Bible tells us about the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, she was in the night of suffering. She kept the problem to herself. Everywhere she went, she was, she was bleeding. 12 years. But one day, a night ended. She came in contact with the one who said, I am the light of the world. And her night changed today. In Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, from verse 10 to 13. Luke 13, from verse 10 to 13. There was a woman who was bent double by sickness, spirit of infirmity, for 
18 years. 18 years. She had to walk about, bend double. No matter how hard she tried, she couldn't lift herself. The devil bound her. Like that. She was a spectacle of shame to the world. For 18 years. Then one day, she met the Lord Jesus Christ. And her night ended. It ended. In John chapter 5, verse 2 to 14. John 5, verse 2 to 14. The Bible tells us of another man by the pool of Bethesda. You know all these people. For 38 years, he was sick. 38 years. Eight long years of night. All friends had forsaken him. By the time Jesus arrived on the scene, he said, I have no man. If you are sick for 38 years, your friends are likely to say, Forget that case. Ha. But the day came, the night ended. I wonder what they said when they suddenly saw him in church, singing, dancing, rejoicing. They've not seen him for 38 years. In Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 11, Acts 3, verse 1 to 11, there was that poor man, born lame, Begging for 40 years by the beautiful gate of the temple it was a long night of watching other people dance and he couldn't dance. Watch other people rejoicing and he couldn't rejoice. But the night ended. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark 10, verse 46 to 52. But we didn't even know what is the difference between day and night. His own day, his own life had been one continuous darkness from the day he was born. And then, they heard that Jesus was passing by. And all of a sudden, darkness gave way to light. It doesn't matter how long your darkness has been. I come in the name of the one who made heaven and earth. Your sun will rise again. Many stories can I choose from? Remember when I was a lecturer in Elori, and there was this very young, very brilliant lawyer. And they all started as an ordinary fever. But very soon we discovered he couldn't he couldn't move his leg properly. Then he couldn't move his hands properly. And before we knew what was happening, he was paralyzed from neck downward. The brain is still there, but he couldn't even sit on his own. So how can you go to court to argue a case if you can't get up? It was a long night. But then one day, the Almighty God stepped in. And suddenly, just as the night came, the night disappeared. 
Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the most high God. I say, Father, my own night must end tonight. Open your mouth and cry to the almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything called night in my life must end tonight. My night must end tonight. My night must end tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my night must end tonight. My night of suffering must end tonight. My night of shame must end tonight. My night of failures must end tonight. My night of sickness must end tonight. My night must end tonight. It must end tonight. My night of loneliness must end tonight. My night of barrenness must end tonight. My night of fruitless efforts must end tonight. My night of disgrace must end tonight. No matter how long the night, it must end. But my home must end tonight. 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 My night must end tonight. My own night must end tonight. My night must end tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my, my own night must end tonight. My night must end tonight. My sun must rise again. My night must end tonight. It has to end. It has to end. It has to end. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, please be seated. Night. The nighttime experience. It's a terrible thing. But as long as the sun rises after that, it is what I mean, it's what the end is that matters. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8 says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I sat down there and I heard all manners of testimonies tonight. And there was one particular testimony that brought tears to my eyes. Barren for 29 years. Oh Lord, have mercy. No, because, because we have to hurry these people up. Say, say your testimony in two minutes because of others and because of time. Can you imagine how many months that woman had wept?
You say happy new year. Ah, amen. This will be my year. And then the year gone. No pregnancy. First year, second year, third year, tenth year, twentieth year, twenty-nine. And then all of a sudden, the night ended. And in one go, the Almighty God brought forth three children. Help me shout hallelujah to my God. Mockers cannot mock her anymore. Those who have been saying, where is your God, can't say so anymore. Those who thought she was going to die barren cannot say so anymore. In the name of the one who called me, your mockers shall be permanently silenced. It is the end that matters. In Job chapter 1, you can read it from verse 1 to 21. Job chapter 1 from verse 1 to 21. Job lost everything. A day, his day became night. The richest man in the entire country was reduced to somebody who said, naked I came. Because the devil took everything away. He said, I came naked. And I know I'll be going naked. Night came. But by the time you get to Job 42, verse 12 to 16, Job 42, 12 to 16, ah, the Bible said God blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. In the name of the one who controls seasons, your end shall be more glorious than your beginning. In Mark chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Mark 3, verse 1 to 5. The Bible tells us of, of a man whose hand had withered. The hand used to be strong. But little by little, the hand became useless. It didn't say the hand was paralyzed. That could be a sudden something. With that means things got bad and got worse and worse until it couldn't get any worse. But then God stepped in. And the withered hand was restored as whole. Every hand that had been withered by the enemy in the name that's above every other name, even before tomorrow morning, your hand will be restored. So I still remember one occasion there was a call made for an offering. There was a man who got up and started crying. Why was he crying? He said, once upon a time, if they made that kind of call, I would go to the pastor and say, please, don't make any further announcement. This is the money you need. He said, now I, I can't even give anything. The hand withered. Every withered hand, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, shall be restored fully in Jesus' name. Yeah. When the sun rises again, the story will change. 
told you the story of my uncle before. Very, very successful man, doing great. And then suddenly the tide turned and he lost everything. He became so poor that he had to be taking the wrapper of his wife to make Buba and Sora. Things got that bad. Then he made up his mind. He said, death is better than shame. He said, I know what I will do. I will go to church. I will sing. I will dance. Everybody will notice me. And then return home and die. He said, I will attend my own funeral. That's what he said. When he came to church and the preacher was preaching and chose to talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that the God who we serve, he will deliver us. They didn't know how God would do it. But God did. Oh, he said, ah, that's true. I don't know how I can get out of my present situation, but I refuse to die. The day he was telling the story, he has just bought 14 cars in a day for those who are working for him. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, Father. remember me tonight. Please remember me. Remember me, Lord. Remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. Let my night end tonight. Lord, remember me tonight. Let me, let me have an encounter with you. Remember me tonight. This very night, Lord, remember me, remember me, remember me. Send your word to me, Lord God Almighty. Remember me. Let my night change today. Let my sun rise. Oh, yes, Lord, remember me tonight. Remember me tonight, Lord. Ancient of days, remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. Almighty God, remember me tonight. Speak to me, Lord. Let me hear just a word. Let me hear a word that would change my night today. Remember me tonight, Father. Remember me tonight. Remember me this very night. Remember me this very night. It's the end that matters, Lord. Let my end be glorious. Let my end be wonderful. Let my sun rise. Let my sun rise. Oh, yes, Lord. Let my sun rise. Please, Daddy, remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. Thank you, Father.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. The one who is passing through a night experience is like somebody who is under a siege. And when the sun rises, the siege will be over. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 to 11, 2 Kings chapter 7, from verse 1 to 11, the Bible tells us that it took less than one day for the siege over the city of Samaria to be lifted. Things had gone so bad. The whole city was going through a night experience so bad that women began to eat their children. Night cannot be darker than that. And then the man of God spoke and said, In less than 24 hours, the siege will be over. And now I'm standing on this exalted altar of the Most High God. And I decree tonight for someone who is under a siege. By the time the sun rises tomorrow, your siege will be over. siege physically they were under siege enemies all around surrounded it, surrounded their city they dare not come out materially they were under siege but they couldn't go out to work so they had no money spiritually they were under siege amen it's not natural for a woman to say, I will eat my child. But then God moved. And in less than 24 hours, everything changed. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17, verse 8 to 16, the widow of Zarephath had been under a siege. For a long time, she watched as day by day the food in the house became smaller and smaller and smaller until there was just one meal left. siege on her was so heavy, she decided the best thing is to commit suicide with my son. Let's have a farewell party. But help was nearer than she thought. Ah. As the Lord lives, the help you have been expecting we come tonight. Help came at the darkest moment. She said to the man of God, only one me to prepare. How big is the meal? Two tiny sticks are enough to prepare the meal. <laughs> but the tide turned. God came and changed the season for her. She never had to beg for food again. 
Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, there's no need for you to be depressed because victory is at hand. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings, 1, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, the enemy had almost concluded their plan. They said to that widow, you don't pay us by tomorrow, we will sell your two sons to recover our money. very day the ever present help in the time of trouble stepped in the plan of the enemy failed before the enemy could close the trap on you you will escape I told you the story before of a young man who was a medical student at uh, UI. He wasn't there when the problem started. His father fought another man in their village. And the man the father fought said to the father, by the time I finish with you, nobody will even remember you ever came to this world. And his, his father said to that man, what, are, what can you do? He didn't know the kind of person he was fighting. So far, the story before, so I'm only telling it because of those who have not heard. If you want to know the details, ask those who have heard it before. <laughs> Within a week, his father died. And the children went home to bury their father. The firstborn had just returned from Germany with a new car. They buried their father. On their way back to their stations, there was an accident. The boy in the new car, the man who came, the firstborn with the new car, had an accident and died. They went home to tell their mother, your firstborn is dead. The mother collapsed and died. The children came to bury their mother on their way back, another accident, the next child died. And it went on until it remained just this boy. Oh Lord, in the name that's above every other name, every siege on your family shall end tonight. And the, the, the man who pronounced that curse on the family saw this one, saw this young fellow. Ah, oh, there is still one more in the family. Oh, uh, okay. Before I kill this one, I will torture him a little. So the boy returned from home, got to the campus, and went mad took all his books, all his clothes, and burnt them. They picked him, took him to Arrow, loaded him with drugs. When he was a bit more stable, they released him. Because he had burnt his books and everything, he went home to go and get money from his father's farm so he could come back and start again. And they, they, that man saw him. He returned back to the campus. Again, they took him to Aru. The way he was, Aru today, school tomorrow, uh, until one day somebody saw him and said, this is not a case for the hospital. 
and they brought him to this camp. And he met the Lord Jesus Christ. Today he's a medical doctor. Today is an evangelist for God. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Most High God and say, Father, before the sun rises tomorrow, lift the siege upon my family. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Leave the siege, O oh Lord, leave the siege. Let the sun rise so that the siege will be over. Let the sun rise so that the siege will be over. Please, Lord, let the sun rise. Let the siege of my family be over. Let the siege of my business be over. Let the siege of my ministry be over. Let the siege over my nation be over. Lord, help. Please, Lord, leave the siege. Leave the siege over me. Leave the siege over my family. Leave the siege over my ministry. Leave the siege. Papa, leave the siege. Leave the siege over my nation. Leave the siege over your church. Leave the siege over my marriage. Lord, leave the siege. Leave the siege over my children. Please, Lord. Leave the siege over my health. Leave the siege. Papa, please leave the siege. Send help to me urgently. Leave the siege. Leave the siege. Leave the siege. Almighty God, please lift the siege. Lift the siege. Lift the siege, Lord. Father, please lift the siege. Lift the siege. Father, lift the siege. Lift the siege. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. A nighttime experience can be as a result of lost opportunities. Many a times they will say opportunities once lost can never be regained. But the sun can rise again. And lost opportunities can be regained. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 6. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, the night has been long and stormy. He said, your day will be longer and glorious. Oh, I want to say amen to this one. Because the Lord said, there's someone here today, he said, you will not carry sorrow into the coming year. Yeah. 
In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. 2 Kings 6, verse 1 to 7. The Bible tells us about the sons of the prophets who went to cut down trees by Jordan. And as they were cutting the, down the trees, the axe head fell into the river. And they cried, Ah, Master, we borrowed the axe. And now the axe head has gone into the river. And we don't even know how to swim. But the Almighty God intervened. The man of God cut down a piece of wood, threw it in the river. The piece of wood carried the anointing into the bottom of the river, located the iron, transferred anointing to the iron. And the iron that was supposed to stay down jumped up and began to swim. Don't joke with the anointing. You can reverse the irreversible. Every opportunity you have lost in the name that's above every other name shall be restored to you. In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37, 1 to 10, the Bible said that there was a valley full of dry bones. Talk of lost opportunities. Those dry bones, as far as any human being is concerned, can never match again. It was an army that was slaughtered in battle. And they were left unburied. And they rotted. And became bones. And they were very dry. Then the Lord spoke through his servant. The bones came back to bones. Flesh covered them. The wind blew. And dry bones became an army again. In Romans chapter 4, from verse 16 to 21, Romans 4, from verse 16 to 21, the Bible tells us that the womb of Sarah was already dead. The womb of Sarah was dead. She had not menstruated for more than 40 years. Opportunity of ever having a child was gone. That's because we left God out of the equation. The moment God moved in, the equations changed. The one they thought can never have a child became the mother of Isaac. In 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22, 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22, Bible tells us of what happened when Elijah had just gone to heaven and Elisha crossed over to Jericho. Jericho had lost a great opportunity because Elijah passed through them. They could have called on him for help. They didn't. They didn't quite recognize the anointing that was on Elijah. But when they saw him go to heaven by a wild wind, they said, ah, ah, the one who could have helped us is gone. But then they saw his mantle falling on the ground. And I thank God for all the testimonies. <laughs> oh, thank God for anointing. Whether the devil likes it or not, the anointing that God has already deposited in you will not run dry. Yeah. 
So when they saw Elisha crossing over, they said, ah, thank God for another opportunity. Before the end of this year, every opportunity you have lost shall be fully restored. I've told you this before. I came to University of Lagos for an interview for Commonwealth Scholarship because I wanted to go for further studies. And uh, Those of you who know mathematics, you know when they ask you a question in mathematics, it's either you know the answer or you don't know. There's no guesswork in mathematics. That's why some people fear it. You can't maneuver. And they asked me all the questions they wanted to ask. And I was wondering, <laughs> do they know that I have honors degree? In mathematics, I mean, the question they were asking me were HSC questions. So I thought I've already won the scholarship. I mean, no, no. But all the time they were asking questions, there was a man there who was dozing. I won't tell you what part of the country he came from. And so when all the others are finished with me, they woke him up. Do you have any questions for him? He said, oh, 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 yes. He said, where is Entebbe? <laughs> the, question, <laughs> the question was so strange to me. I said, sorry, sir, I'm not here for geography. And everybody laughed. And he was the chairman. I didn't know. So they laughed at the chairman. Ah. Of course, I knew then that I've lost the scholarship. But as I was coming out of the place, I met my professor who taught me when I was at Unsuka. And he saw me, ah, you know, what are you here for? I said, I have, I'm here for a scholarship interview. What for? I want to go abroad to do my master. He said, you don't need to go anywhere. I'm here in Lagos. Come here, I know your stuff. I thought I lost an opportunity. I didn't know I gained the one. Because if I had gone, I would not have been born again when I got born again. I won't be standing here before you preaching today. I want you to stand on your feet and lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, for every opportunity I have lost, give me a better one. Come on, open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. For every opportunity that I've lost, give me a better one, a better one, a far, far more glorious one, a much, much, much valuable one. Every opportunity I've lost, Father, give me a better one. Give me a better one. Oh, yes, Lord. I might have lost some opportunities. Give me far, far more glorious works. You are able to do it. You control time. You control season. Give me a better opportunity, a better opportunity. Give me a better opportunity. Give me a better opportunity, O oh Lord. For everyone I've lost, give me something more glorious, more beautiful, more everlasting. Give me a greater opportunity, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, 
Oh, yes, Father, give me better opportunities to replace everyone that I've lost. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. So I want you with boldness to say to your enemies, don't laugh too soon. Uh, because my son will rise again. <laughs> Enemy, don't laugh too soon. In Genesis 16, verse 1 to 5, Genesis 16, verse 1 to 5, the Bible said when Sarah saw that she was barren, she said to her husband, take my maid. I mean, she's my maid. Whatever she produced is mine. Go into her. Let's have a child by her. So Abraham agreed, went into the maid, and the maid became pregnant. <laughs> and she began to ridicule her mistress. Hey, Mama, you've been here all these years just eating Papa's food. Nothing to show for it. Look at me. Just one encounter. <laughs> but then in Genesis 21, verse 1 to 6, Genesis 21, verse 1 to 6, Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. I decree tonight, every one of you here, you will laugh last. In Judges 15, verse 14 to 15, Judges 15 from verse 14 to 15, when they brought Samson bound before the Philistines, the Philistines began to rejoice. Ah, we got him. He's finished. But even while they were still laughing, thinking they got him, God moved. The one they thought was going to die was the one who killed a thousand of them and the rest of them fled. The enemy was laughing and the laughter froze in their mouth. As long as Christ is in me, nobody can write me off. Colossians 1.27 for Lucian 127 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, that's what they saying when we were young. Enemy, don't rejoice over me. If I fall, I will rise again. Is that true of you? Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> let, 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 let me say amen to this one loud and clear. Because the Lord said there is someone here. So very soon you'll be hearing congratulations. 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 In Isaiah chapter 3, 
verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. God made a promise. Say you to the righteous, it shall be well with him. My tomorrow will be all right. What about your own? Psalm 25, verse 2. Psalm 25, verse 2. David said, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemy triumph over me. How many of you trust the Lord? Ah, wave your hand to him and shout hallelujah. Each time I consider the story of Joseph, my faith in God is increased. God showed him a dream. He showed him he was going to be great. The brothers sold him. They first of all threw him into a pit. He said, let's kill him. Let's see what will happen to his dream. The pit was dry. They sold him to slavery. He got there and prospered. They threw him to prison. He got to prison and prospered. He interpreted a dream for somebody who, who, who he told. When you get to the palace, remember me. The fellow got there and forgot him. It was a long night for Joseph. But there's a particular section of the story that I'm, I'm not sure you, many of you pay attention to. The wife of Potiphar, when she got Joseph thrown into prison by lying against him, thought, uh -huh, stupid boy. I told him to compromise his faith. He refused. Now he's gone forever. Do you know that when Joseph got on the throne, they said every knee must bow before him. I wasn't there. It's just my imagination. But I think that the first place Joseph rode to in that chariot must have been Potiphar's house. I, 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 I don't know. I, mean, I have a rough idea. He would probably have said, uh, call out Potiphar's wife. Uh, let her come. <laughs> uh, uh, come and see the Joseph you threw to prison. And, and she came and she had to fall on her feet. Because the sun has risen. The sun has risen for you. The sun will rise for somebody today. In 1963, in Ondo, I was a teacher at Ondo Boys High School. And Dr. Inamdi Azikwe was the Governor General first black governor general of Nigeria. And he was visiting, was going around as governor general. So he came to Undo. And of course, the whole city came out to meet him. And we, teachers, students, everybody, we lined the route. And he was riding an open car. And as he was driving past where we, those of us from Mount Robos High School, were learning, now, suddenly he stopped. He asked them to stop the car. Why? He came down from the car and stood before a man, one of their teachers, one of the teachers in, at Mount Robos High School. You know what happened? 
teacher was the one who was responsible for the rustication of Enamdi Asikwe when he was his pupil. Before Asikwe hid himself in a ship that took him to America to go and study. The boy that was rusticated is now the governor general. He stood before his teacher. I said, hello. Stand on your feet. Cry to the almighty God and say, Father, let me laugh last. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth. Father, let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Oh, almighty God. Let me laugh last. 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 Almighty God, in your miraculous way, let me laugh last. 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 Almighty God, let me laugh last. Please, Lord, let me laugh last. I don't know how you will do it, Lord, but please, Lord, let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Oh, that day I saw an old man weep. It's not a good thing to see a man weep. But when, when the governor general comes down from his car, I don't know how he was able to locate him out of the crowd, but he did. And all he said was, hello. You thought you had destroyed my dream. I am here. Let me bring this little bit to conclusion because we still have another program later. All I'm trying to say to somebody here today is that your joy is at hand. Why? Because in the text I read to you, Psalm 30 verse 5, Psalm 30 verse 5, ah, he said, even his anger endureth but for 
a moment. Even if, even if it is God that is angry with me, uh, he can forgive. His anger won't last forever. His anger won't last forever. He said his anger is for a moment. And then he went on to say, weeping may endure for a night. What is coming in the morning? <laughs> According to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He says, stop being afraid of the lion because I've already removed its teeth. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26 says, God is a giver of joy. He says, God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom, knowledge, and joy. And then in John 16, verse 24, John 16, verse 24, Jesus Christ said, You want joy? All you need to do is ask for it till your joy be full. So your last prayer tonight your last prayer tonight is going to be prayed at the altar you come to him and cry to him and say God ah, let my son rise we are many here but I want my own son to rise let my son rise again. I am tired of darkness. I'm tired of the night. I'm tired of sorrow. Almighty God, let my son rise again. Go ahead. Talk to the Almighty God. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes. Cry to him. Lord, let my son rise again. Let my son rise again.
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the name that's above every other name, that wonderful name of Jesus. Your season of rejoicing will begin. No matter how long your night had been, your night went to night. Your end will be far more glorious than your beginning. Every siege against you, against your body, against your finances, against your family, against your business, against your church, against your nation shall be lifted tonight. In the name of the Almighty God, you will laugh last. <laughs> By the time the sun is rising physically tomorrow, your own sun will be risen also. And you will never forget tonight. It will be the beginning of your joy. The beginning of your success. The beginning of your progress. You will laugh last. And for the rest of your life, you will serve God with gladness. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. Send a light, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, send a light, oh, send a light into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, send a light, oh, send a light. 
into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light, send a light, send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my life. In the name of Jesus, send a light. Jehovah, send a light into my home. In the name of Jesus, send a light. Send a light, send a light. Jehovah, send a light into my home. In the name of Jesus, send a light. Send a light. Send a light, Jehovah, send a light into my life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Well, we have just two things to do more quickly. One, we want to say thank you to the Almighty God. And then... I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask God for something special for this month. This is a very special month indeed. It's a month many of us will live to remember. So, very quickly, let's get ready our Thanksgiving offering. And uh, choir, get ready to sing. And ushers, thank you very much for attending to us. Over to you, choir. What has done for me? I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed me in his blood. What the Lord has done, what the Lord has done for me, oh, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. Oh, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He saved me and worshiped in His blood. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He saved me and watched me in His love. What the Lord has done, what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all What the Lord has done for me I cannot tell it all What the Lord has done for me I cannot tell it all He saved me and was with me So, so I can shout hallelujah I can shout hallelujah
I believe your son is already risen. So I'm believing God that by the time you come for the Congress, you will have your own testimony. So I'm going to ask you for two minutes to ask God for something very special today, something big that will be part of the testimonies you will share when you come back next month. So talk to God for two minutes. Let's begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to thank you for another glorious night. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you because we believe you that our Son has risen again. So, Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, everything your children have asked for tonight, before the sun rises tomorrow, turn it to a testimony. Before the sun rises tomorrow, Let every one of your children sing a new song. By the time they return for the Congress, my Father and my God, let them have multiple testimonies. Bless their offering, O Lord. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that these your children will never know poverty again. As they go, Father, please go with them. And let it be well with them. And let them serve you with gladness. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Who oh got the biggest miracle of tonight? Let me hear you shout the biggest hallelujah. Amen. Now, walkers, make sure you sit where you can see the screen. Because we'll be showing you something tonight. Those of you who are not walkers, God bless you. Service is over. You can go. You who are workers, if you want to ease yourself, 
do so very quickly. Uh, return to where you can see the screen clearly uh, tonight. God bless you. Within 20 minutes, if you need to ease yourself, do so. Then come back very quickly to your seat. Just walk us. The rest of us, 